Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Speak Up and Inspire podcast. Um, I have started this podcast to further my project for the Speak Up and Inspire series, which already has two episodes on YouTube. So if you were to go to YouTube right now, you would be able to see the first two episodes of the Speak Up and Inspire series. And the Speak Up and Inspire series was originated to give a voice to survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, on the series, we met with five beautiful women who shared their survivor stories live with us among a small audience. So the Speak Up and Inspire series, we decided instead of doing a quarterly or a monthly meeting of the minds, featuring different people in the community, community leaders, advocates, and so forth, I decided to start this podcast. So the Speak Up and Inspire podcast is here. Today is the launch. And today I'm going to have the special guest of my family. Um, my family has been very supportive in everything that I do. Um, I started the Butterfly Visions Project in 2015 because I wanted to talk about my experiences in the community and with different organizations. Um, I am a domestic violence survivor. I am also a sexual assault survivor. And so I wanted to give my voice to the community and talk about my experience. But what I found is that when I started talking about my own personal experiences, I started connecting with victims that were, um, I guess you could say afraid to share their story, were embarrassed to show that share their story, or felt like nobody would listen to their story. And so as I connected in my speaking engagements and talking to different people, not necessarily audiences that were specifically made up of victims, but just talking to audiences, period, about raising awareness about sexual assault and domestic violence, I found that there was always somebody in the audience who had their own experiences whether they were a domestic violence survivor themselves or they were a sexual assault survivor or just wanted to do more in the community. So that is, <laughs> I'm sorry, meet Harley, <laughs> our, our family dog. Um, so I started the Speak Up and Inspire series um, to, to help people that had a voice, that needed to be heard, that wanted to talk about their experiences, that was the reason why I started the Speak Up Inspire series. That is the reason why Butterfly Visions Project is what it is today, because of the speakers who have come forth, the advocates that continue to work in the community to raise awareness and help victims. Um, but also, it was a form of healing for me. Um, just to briefly tell you, uh, ever since I was, I would say the abuse started for me when I was about 10, 11 years old. Um, there was a friend of the family who um, was staying with us who took advantage of me as a child. That was my first situation of being in, in, in an abusive environment. Um, from there, there was abuse in my home and there was also abuse around me, just in different families and friends' families. And so I started seeing things at a very young age that didn't feel right to me. Um, and this continued throughout, really, honestly, the rest of my life. Um, I lost my virginity to rape when I was 13 years old. Um, two boys in the neighborhood um, assaulted me, and that's how I lost my virginity. And so from that point on, I really had a very skewed view of what um, attention was, love was, relationships was, and so forth, because my starting off very early and very young, mm -hmm. I had already been victimized. I had already been taken advantage of. I had already felt abuse. I had already been violated. Um, so I grew up with a lot of issues when it came to sexuality and who I was and who I could trust and um, just a, a variety of different emotions that a child should not have to experience at such a young age. Unfortunately, I did. Um, I ended up in foster care and I was in foster care for about two years. 
thankfully, uh, a woman that I worked with took me in under her wing and she took me in as, as her daughter. So mm-hmm. I was in foster care um, in the system and it was, it was an experience that I don't wish on any child. Um, so I'm very vocal when it comes to helping children, working with children, um, talking about abuse in the family, talking about violence in the family, because I experienced it firsthand as a child um, from the, the neighbor that should have been welcoming me to a new neighborhood um, who ended up being the my first sexual experience of rape um, to a friend of the family's. Um, violating me as a young child to dealing with um, abuse within the family um, and just witnessing a lot of things that a child at 11, 12, 13, 14 years old should not experience. So this has been my life. And unfortunately, because I was introduced to things so early, my life continue to spiral out of control because I thought that those things were normal. Um, Just, you know, being uh, promiscuous, um, not understanding the difference between love and affection and, you know, taking on the right types of uh, relationships. Um, Thankfully, somebody came into my life who was very protective Um, He genuinely loves me and wanted to protect me and support me. Um, But at the time, I didn't understand. I didn't understand why he cared for me so much. And I didn't understand why he was protecting me so much. I thought he was just another person that was coming into my life, um, taking advantage of me. And so I didn't appreciate him. Um, I took advantage of him because I felt um, that I didn't deserve it, that I wasn't worthy. And I lost someone that was very special to me, that was really good for me. But at the time, I just didn't feel it. I didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel as if I deserved for someone to love me unconditionally because of all the experiences that I had already gone through. So when you see me today, you see me hopefully as a woman who is a survivor, as someone who is strong, someone who's a mother, someone who's protective. But that hasn't always been me. Um, I've, I've grown up and done a lot of things that I did not like. I've grown up and seen a lot of things that I should not have seen or experienced. I'm 42 years old. Um, I have been in foster care. I have been raped more than once. I have been in domestic violence situations all of my life, all of my life, up until recently. So... Um, I've had unhealthy relationships. I've been in abusive relationships. I've witnessed crime. I've witnessed violence. Um, I've w- witnessed what the system does to children. Um, I've been through it all. And I can honestly say that today I feel as if I have overcome so many things. I feel as if um, even though I don't feel that I deserved the things that I went through, I feel that the reason that I went through them was to be able to help others. And so I do that every day. I share my story. I talk openly. um, I answer questions. um, I I take any opportunity I can to speak to others. um, I educate myself. um, I train myself. I go to trainings. um, I can take positive feedback and constructive criticism. Um, I do all those things so that I can continue helping people. Um, it, it doesn't feel good to, to, to say in front of my children that I've been a rape victim more than once. Um, it doesn't feel good to say that somebody in my family hurt me when I was a young child. Um, it doesn't feel good to go to my husband and tell him when we're dating, you know, this is what my history is. And do you still love me once I told him all the things that I have been through? Um, it's not a good feeling knowing that you have lived a, a, a life that could have gotten you killed, um, but it didn't. I'm still standing here today. Um, I am still over, overall healthy. Um, I do not have any diseases. I don't have a million kids. I don't have a million baby daddies. Um, I, am, I am vibrant. I'm loving life. I have my beautiful children. 
I'm, I'm married to someone who understands my past. Um, and I'm just living my life the best that I can. And I know that there are so many people out there who are also living their truth and their truth now, currently, and presently is because of everything they have suffered through. And so the Speak Up and Inspire series that I have started is to give those people, you, me, um, anyone that wants to share their story, that they can come and they can do it here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, I would encourage you to go to YouTube um, this evening when you get off or maybe another day when you have time and search for the Speak Up and Inspire series and you will see the first two episodes that I filmed um, with some amazing women. It was a very open, intimate um, setting and you are able to feel their stories. Miss Nicolian, um, Miss Alicia, Miss Katrina, um, Miss Avia, all of them have shared their personal stories of domestic violence and sexual assault, just like I am doing right now and what I will do in the future. So part of me being a survivor is having a strong support system like all of you that are watching right now. Um, I see that Miss Lakeisha is here and she's watching. She is a very good friend of mine. Um, and having people that are able to support you through your journey um, is something that every victim needs, every survivor needs. Without you, I cannot do this. Without my family and without my friends, I cannot do this. Um, it takes a lot to talk about your story. It takes a lot to say that I'm a sexual assault victim and survivor. It takes a lot to say that I'm a domestic violence survivor yeah. um, and that I was victimized when I was young. But I'm no longer ashamed. I'm no, I no longer feel as if my past defines who I am. I no longer feel unworthy. I no longer feel as if I don't deserve to be loved. I no longer feel as if I have to give my my body to someone to show them that 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 is love because I know now that that's not love. I know that I am a good person. I know that I have a good heart and I know that the things that happened to me as a child and growing up are not my fault. Then I did not know that. There are children right now who are suffering. There are children right now who are being abused. Um, last year, I'm sorry, last week, a 16-year-old lost her life. Her boyfriend and the mother, I'm sorry, the father of her six-month-old baby beat her to death um, right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. She died last week. She was only 16 years old, and her children's father beat her to death. I just heard a story last week um, with Young Women Saved by Grace. She said that one of the young ladies that she tried to help in the community was killed by her boyfriend. 16 years old, shot in the head, killed by her boyfriend. I can't imagine that being my daughter. Right now in the news, we are hearing all of the, the, the craziness that's going on with R. Kelly that's been going on for decades. And now, finally, charges are coming up against him. But how many women have been affected by what he has done? Um, we might not completely agree with everything, but there is a problem, and it's a problem that continues to go on. Our children are being hurt. Our children are killing each other. They're, they, don't, they don't believe in using their hands anymore. They're shooting each other um, in the schools. Our children need our help. I was a child once, you were a child once. If you were ever a victim of any kind of violence in your family, whether it be domestic violence, child abuse, sexual assault, please speak up and help somebody else. That is what the Speak Up and Inspire series is about and that is what this podcast is about. Speak up, share your stories and help someone else. There are children out here who are going to the same things that I went through. There are grown women and men who are going through the same things that we're going through. 
It doesn't matter whether you are heterosexual, whether you are homosexual, whether you are trans transgender, whether you are black, white, um, doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your social status is. It doesn't matter what your economic status is. Everybody is affected by domestic violence, sexual assault, and violence in their community and in their families. It happens every day, unfortunately. But it takes for people like us, and I see Miss Jean Benton is on, on that's watching right now. She's been a mentor to me. She is, an, she is an advocate in the community. She's been an advocate in the community for a long time. These are the type of women and men that we need to come and speak up and share their stories so that we can make change in our community to help our children, to help our mothers, to help our sisters, to help our neighbors fight against domestic violence, sexual assault, and violence in our communities. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about what are some things that are important to you that are going on in the community? I posted a poll. Please answer it when you get a chance. I want you to think about what is it in the community that affects you? I have Mr. Gilbert on the um, that's watching right now. And I know that he, he just lost a, um, a peer and a friend um, in the line of fire. Our police officers, a lot of the community does not trust police officers because of all of the crime and all the violence that is going on between the police officers in our community. What can we do about it? We have to speak up. We have to talk about it. We have to support each other. And that is what the Speak Up and Inspire series is about. That is what this podcast is going to be about. Sharing our stories, helping each other, healing together, and coming together, bringing that village together that we so desperately need again. Everyone knows the saying, it takes a village it does take a village, but if we don't come together, there is no village. If we don't speak to our neighbors, there is no village. If we are not watching out for our children when they're outside playing, there is no village. If we are not talking amongst ourselves and supporting each other and raising awareness for each other and educating each other, there is no village. I remember when I was young, when there were happy times and there were happy moments, when I would go outside, the neighbors watched each other. If one of the kids got in trouble, the neighbors had no problem saying anything. They all watched out for each other. Now, everybody's for themselves, mostly. There is no village, but it does take a village. That's why it's important for us to speak up. We have to speak up. If we don't speak up, we can't... We can't foster change. We can't help anybody. We can't do anything if we don't speak up. Um, part of my healing has been writing, and that's why I published my book, Reality Check. Um, it's based on true life experiences. And if you have read my book already, then the first chapter is my experience pretty much down to the T. All I did was just change the characters. Um, it was the situation um, before, which actually led me to move to Charlotte. I was raped by someone that I trusted and um, never dated, but he was in my life um, and, he, he, and he raped me. My book, Reality Check, talks about that rape in detail. Um, and the book is about how the character in the book, whose name is Tony, survived being a sexual assault victim. But she's also an advocate in her community, and she's helping two teenagers who are also dealing with trauma in their lives. So speaking up is very important. I'm not here to sell a book. I'm here to talk about issues in the community that need to be addressed, not just with me, but with you as well. If there's something going on in your community, it's time to speak up. If there's something going on in your child's school, you have to speak up. Our children need for us to advocate for them, just like victims need for us to advocate for them. So speaking up is very important. 
we have to change the policies, we have to change the laws, we have to vote the right people in, um, we have to fight for our rights as women, as children, as families, and we have to do that together. It takes a village. You are right. That is a good statement. But do you feel that you really have a village around you? Do you really feel as if you walk outside and something happens in your neighborhood, everyone's going to come together to help each other? I don't feel that way. I know that there's people that I can call for support, but in my own neighborhood, do I feel that closeness? Do I feel that connectivity? Do I feel the cohesiveness of the people that are right here on each side of me? I don't even know one of their names. It takes a village. The village means working together. Even if it's not your neighbor, it's the store owner. It's the person down the street. It's the person that you can call whenever you need to. It's your, your parents, your sisters, your brothers, your, grand, your grandparents, the community leaders, the advocates in the community, the survivors. We have to come together, people. We have to speak up. And that's what the Speak Up and Inspire podcast is gonna be all about, sharing your stories, right here with me so that we can inspire others to share their stories. Because when we speak up, we become a voice. We become the ones that are a voice to others who are too scared to speak up, who are in situations that you don't know how to get out of. When you speak up and you share your story and you become a survivor, it's important to tell other people how to get out of those situations how to rise above and to soar above everything that you've been through. It is so important. So I hope that you will continue to watch on Mondays at eight o'clock. Next week, we will be talking about human trafficking with Miss Renee, or also known as Hope. She's I Speak Hope. She will be talking to us next Monday at eight o'clock about human trafficking. Now, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. What I would like for you to do is look up human trafficking statistics in your city, because right here in Charlotte, North Carolina, the statistics are very, very high. Charlotte is one of the major cities for human trafficking or sex trafficking, and it's very scary. Please hold on to your children when you're out. Do not let them get out of your eyesight. Your, your, your girls, your teenagers, your daughters, your mothers, even your boys. Boys are not, um, I'm sorry, what is it? Boys are not exempt from being taken. Human trafficking is very, very real. It's not just in foreign countries anymore. It's right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And next Monday, Ms. Hope is going to talk to us about her experience. She's going to speak up right here on the Speak Up and Inspire podcast about human trafficking right here. She's going to share her experience and she's going to share with you um, how, how she survived, how she got out and what she is doing now to help others um, that are fallen victim and also to protect you and your family and your children and your wives and your mothers and your sons against human trafficking. So I want you to meet my family because they are my biggest support system along with you. First, I want to introduce you to my husband. He fell asleep. <laughs> to my husband, Mr. Cedric. And you can see that he is wearing his family t shirt <laughs> So, Mr. Cedric, tell us, why do you feel that it's important to speak up? Why do you feel that it's important to speak up about issues in the community? Um, honestly, uh, to put the voice out there, um, you can't address the problem uh, if you don't know the problem. So, um, somebody has to say something so that it can be brought to attention, so that it can be addressed. So. Okay. So when you you and I first met, what did you know about domestic violence, if anything? Um, I actually didn't know that much about it. Um, you know, obviously, movies and whatnot, but um, I never really gave it that much attention 
Um, so until you, um, so your voice about the topic um, kind of put me in a position to educate myself so that I could be aware, so that I could understand the stuff that you're talking about. Um, and just so everyone knows, these questions that I'm asking him right now are not scripted. He had no idea what questions I was going to ask um, because I wanted it to be sincere. So um, when it comes to domestic violence and you as a man, your experience with doing different things with me, what has been the response from other men about domestic violence? Um. Well, you know, I mean, a lot of other men are kind of like, you know, looking at me as a man. He's, you know, he's really a big fan of hers. You know, he's, um, you know, stepping out there, you know, saying, standing up for her, you know, being her backbone, you know, and that's real important in uh, not just marriages, you know, relationships, partnerships, anything, you know, saying, just uh, being there for your people. Um, so that, Definitely. Um, also, um, even though we see a lot of the domestic violence geared towards women, you know, it's a lot that's actually geared towards men too. And if, if anything, whatever, we're not seeing the men speaking up at all. So you don't hear a lot of a lot of topics. You don't hear a lot of, of stories about the men that get abused and. And it's actually it's pretty, it's pretty real. It's it's out there. So um, uh, that's 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 coming out. Okay. All right. Um. So you said with domestic violence that there is actually help um for for men out there right now. So um, I know that with the Speak Up and Inspire series, we had um some husbands that came and were in the audience. Um. What was the most, I guess, and what was an, um, the most impressionable thing that you took away from the experience with the men in the audience, watching their wives and girlfriends talk about their, their experiences? Um, well, a, lot, a lot of them were in shock. Um, a lot of it was, a you know, a lot, I took a lot of it was a shock, you know. Um, there was one uh, couple in particular, and um, the the now husband and father. Um, he was actually there during the, the time of the situation, and it, you know, it was kind of like a well, "what would you do" kind of situation. Um, I don't know if I could do the same, you know, if 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 I was in the boat that he was in. To, to actually witness that happening. So um, I guess it's just the, the shock, you know? Okay. Um, when it comes to um, going out and the, the women, um, just seeing you, I know that that has been um, helpful to a lot of the victims. When you go with me to the domestic violence shelters um, and when we go on the speaking engagements, and I always like to impress upon the women that because they've been victims of domestic violence and sexual assault does not mean that there are not other men out here that won't be abusive, that will be respectful of them, um, that will listen to them, and that they still have the hope of having healthy um, relationships. So if you were to meet a young woman um, or even a man um, in out in the community who basically felt that they were not able to have a healthy relationship because of their domestic violence and sexual assault. What would you say to them? Um, yes, deep question. <laughs> uh, I mean, even like I said, for me, um, and then this is based off of my experiences, um, uh, you know, I didn't know a lot about any of this. Um, and actually, uh, even, you know, first meeting you, I only know a little bit about your story. I actually, you know, as as we progressed on, uh, I've learned more and more about your stories. And I, I didn't catch that 
in the beginning stages, obviously. <laughs> so it was uh, definitely a shock, but um, uh, it wasn't something that that scared me off or steered me away. It actually um, pushed for me to be a stronger backbone for you. So, um, you know, I, I stress to other people out there to, um, to have an open heart. Um, that's part of the reason how we met. Um, so just um, our heart and our love for each other and for the community. Um, so just um, you never know a person's story. You never know what they've been through, what they're going through currently. Um, so uh, you just got to put it out there. Um, and the right person will come along that'll respect you, that'll love you, that'll love you more uh, because of what you've uh, been through. Uh, and um, they'll help you, uh, and they'll walk with you. Uh, that's, the, that's the big thing, is uh, walking this path with you um, together. Okay, thank you, babe. Thank you. Um, we think that it's always um, also important for the children to be involved in the community um, with us. So the twins, they do go with us. They go to speaking engagements with us. They go to different events with us um, because we think that it's very important for them to be aware of, number one, what is mommy talking about? Um, what is domestic violence? Them being aware of what domestic violence is, but also sexual assault because they're 11 years old and there is going to come a time when they are going to start dating and they are going to start um, getting into intimate relationships. And we want them to understand and be aware of what domestic violence is and what sexual assault is. And so the twins had a project and the project for them was to tell us or to tell you why is it important for people to speak up, even them, when it comes to issues in the community. So my son, Devin, um, he came up with um, his reason, <laughs> and so did Heaven, for their reasons for speaking up about things in the community. So right now they're running around um, being nervous, <laughs> but they are gonna share with you why they feel that it's important to speak up about issues in the community. Uh, stop! Yeah. Stop being nervous. There's nothing to be nervous. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Show them your, your drawing. So they drew the Speak Up and Inspire series. These are our colors, the purples and the turquoises. Um, those are the, the colors that represent our organization, Butterfly Visions Project, and the Speak Up and Inspire series. So, Heaven, tell us why is it important to speak oh. up? It's important to huh? <laughs> it is important to you can read it. Go ahead. It is important to speak up and inspire because when you speak up, whether it's domestic violence or whatever. You can speak up and tell other people, um, of other people about domestic violence, and then people will be inspired, and then they will go out and tell other people about sexual assault and domestic violence. Your speak, and you're speaking up and inspiring other people to do the same, and then that means that you not only that you not only speaking up but you also inspire other people to do what you do. Okay. Very good. So um so Heaven, you feel that speaking up and about different issues, you feel that it's important why? Why is it important to you? So when you were going through the bullying in school last year, right? And mommy had to basically become your advocate in school. I didn't want to go to school no more. You didn't want to go to school anymore, right? So when I spoke up on your behalf and went into the schools, 
and talk to them about bullying, how did that make you feel that you had somebody to advocate for you? I didn't feel But you know that I talked to them. Um, that made me feel happy. Happy. And did... that I know somebody was on my side to tell what happened. Right. So good. So when you have somebody who advocates on your behalf, that means that they are talking for you um, and they are doing what they can to, to help you through the situation, correct? Uh -huh. Right. Okay. So that is what happens when we go out into the community and talk to domestic violence victims and survivors. When we talk to them about our stories and we share our stories, then they feel as if they are not alone. Um, they feel as if they are given some kind of hope. Um, it gives them happiness and joy to know that there is someone that is speaking up, even if they are not ready to speak up for themselves. Um, so those are the kind of responses that we get, and those are the ways that we inspire people by sharing our stories. Um, Devin? Come on. My son, Devin, he wants to share with you also why he feels that it's important to speak up. This is my picture that I want to do. I wrote... To speak up and inspire means to speak your mind, to inspire others, inspire them, inspire them to hope, to comfort, and to love other people. Okay. So you feel that when you speak up, what does it do for the person that's listening? It, it helps them know that you love them and you want to comfort them. Okay. Um, when you've gone with us to um, in speaking engagements and events and stuff like that, what have you witnessed about the people that are listening to what we have to say as survivors? Well, they listen and I mean, they always, they always get something out of it. They never, just, it, they always feel that you want to help them mm -hmm. or, if you, or that they should help somebody else. And if it's not somebody that is, um, a survivor or if somebody just in the neighborhood then um, they feel that they should help other people that they know or that that would need help mm -hmm. and um, it helps them to remember that there is people that want to help. Right, okay. Well that's good. Um, so how do you feel about when I go out and talk to people about my story? How does that make you feel as my son? Well, makes me feel proud of you because I never knew that all this was and you did a pretty good job hiding <laughs> But but it lets me know that you would help me and uh, any other any other person that comes in the path that you help or would like help. Okay. Okay, good. Um Heaven, how do you feel about your mom sharing her story with other people? How do you feel about that? Good. Okay. And what about you, Cedric? How do you feel? How do you feel about going with me and um, my sharing my story with other people? Um, it's... I mean, it's tough. It's tough to hear uh, these stories um, about what has happened to you in the past, especially as your husband. Um, just knowing the, the pain that you went through, but at the same time, it's very, I guess, the, the word of the day, inspiring, um, because um, you didn't let it keep you down. Um, I think some key stuff that you said uh, at um, some other events was about um, the fine line and the difference between the victim and a survivor and uh, choosing to better yourself, choosing to speak out, choosing to get past what you're going through and to even try to help others is what makes you a survivor. Um, so it's, it's growing past that victim stage and, uh, and getting out and reaching out to others. Um, so um, 
the fact that you are comfortable enough to tell your story to others, you know, to, to, to put that out in the public, um, to, to let people see you in that vulnerable state or whatever, you know, the people that, that, that need the voice, the people that don't have their own voice, the people that are scared about their current situation or situation they have been through, um, seeing you do that allows them to feel how you feel and, uh, and, and it shows them that they too can speak up. Um, they too can, can be heard. Um, and, and that also, you know, lets them know like, what they need to do to, um, to become survivors. Well, thank you. Um, the whole purpose of the Speak Up and Inspire podcast is for myself um, and others to be able to share our stories. Um, I have an amazing support system. I have my kids. I have my husband. I have my the rest of my Come family. On. I have the rest of my family. Um, and I know that in order for anybody, any victim or any survivor to make it to its survival stages, they have to have strong support systems. Um, that includes you just listening now. You are supporting me and my journey to continue being an advocate in the community. Um, I have a lot of different um, people in the community who support me that I've mentioned earlier. Um, and so it's very important that if you come across someone who is a victim, that you support them through their journey to healing. And that is the whole the whole inspiration behind the Speak Up and Inspire series. For us to share our stories as, as survivors, to raise awareness about different issues in our community, not just about domestic violence and sexual assault, but about issues in the community that are affecting us every day. Politics, finances, um, education system. There are so many things going, in our, going on in our community that there are specialists out there who study about these things. But a person who has actually been through those things, like domestic violence and sexual assault and violence in the family and so forth, those are, those are the true warriors. Those are the people who can really affect others and can really help others because they've been through it themselves. A person can educate themselves about it, they can get training in it, but when you've gone through it yourself, that's what makes the difference. That makes a bigger impact, in my opinion, because we have experienced it. We've come out on the top. We can tell you the resources. We can tell you the path that we've taken. But everybody's journey is different. Everyone takes their own road to survival. In order to get there, you have to have support. This is my support system. My children, my husband, my family, you, all of you are my support system. All of you make this possible for me. Um, even though I am a survivor, I still have my moments where I need support, emotional support, uh, spiritual support, mental support. I still need those things because even though I'm a survivor, I still have those things, those experiences that lay dormant sometimes that come out at times that I don't even realize it and that I don't even sometimes know until it hits me. Having a support system is very important. I want to support you in your journey, just as you've supported me in my journey, and that is part of why I'm doing the Speak Up and Inspire series. Again, excuse me, I started the Speak Up and Inspire series on YouTube. There are two episodes on there right now, but now I decided to do the, to do the podcast. I want to be able to reach more survivors, more community leaders, more advocates, um, more people in the community who want to share their story. This is the way and this is the, the platform for me to do that. As I mentioned earlier, we will be speaking to I Speak Hope, Miss Hope next week, who will be sharing her, her experiences of being a victim of human or trafficking. This month is National Human Trafficking Month. So next Monday at eight o'clock, please come back and join us as we listen to Ms. Hope 
share her experiences of being a survivor of human trafficking and what she is doing now for her community to stop human trafficking and to help victims. I hope that you will um, join us again next week. This was a very, in, very personal launch of the podcast because I wanted you to see me for who I am. I wanted you to know who is going to be hosting this. I wanted you to meet my family who supports me every week. Um, I wanted it to be personal. I wanted you to, to hear part of my story. But I will be sharing my story, I'm sure, every single time that I come on. Um, <laughs> am I going to? No, Heaven, she's right here. We can't all fit in the thing, <laughs> in the video, but here she is. Um, I want you to know that when I invite you to be on the, the podcast, that you are going to have, you're going to have the support of me. You're going to have the support of everyone that's going to be watching, but also knowing that your stories not only inspire me, but they are going to inspire someone else. So this is the Speak Up and Inspire podcast every night. I'm sorry, every Monday night at eight o'clock. This is where we are going to be. We're going to be talking about um, talking to different people in the, the community, different community leaders, advocates, um, just anyone who wants to share their story to inspire others towards change. Um, we're going to be educating, um, providing training, resources, um, just sharing valuable information that comes from a personal place, that comes from our hearts, that comes from our experiences because we want to inspire everyone that has an experience that can help someone else, that they will do so. And hopefully you will do it with us. So this is me, Tiffany. This is me, Heaven. Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we all are. Here we are. The Speak Up and Inspire launch. Here it is. This is it raw and this is how it's gonna go every monday <laughs> at eight next monday we will be talking to miss hope about human trafficking next monday at 8 p.m facebook live right here we hope that you will enjoy us please have a great night from who the said standards. that who said that Ooh, oh that's say. torian i was about to say torian behave <laughs> good night everybody and we will see you next monday at eight o'clock Thank you. <laughs> Love you.